For both beginners and accomplished home chefs, cooking can seem to be a challenging task. Even if we follow a recipe to the letter, it doesn't always turn out just right. We never really go to the links of looking at the basic science that governs the foods we love. Learning proper technique opens the doors to a wonderful new world of cooking with confidence and ease. Hello, I'm Chef Olive. A couple of years ago, I started a home chef cooking school, Kitchen on Fire, with my partner in crime, Chef Mike C. That's me. Anyways, after being in the business for over 30 years, I still had a problem cutting food. Yeah, back then, Olive's knife skills were real bad. You should have seen all the bandages on his hands. Before, after. Not only did Mike C show me how to cut things properly, but most importantly, how to not cut myself. It's actually really easy to cut like a pro. So after you wash your ingredients... And your hands... You gotta cut stuff up. We all have to do it, but it's a lot simpler than you think. So, we've decided to share Mike C's extensive knowledge from his extremely popular knife skills class with you at home. So that's why we're making this first Technique DVD. Are you ready? Are you set? Let's go! If there were three quintessential knives you had in your collection at home, it would be of the three following. First, some shape, form, or fashion of paring knife. The second knife that we need in our arsenal is some shape, form, or fashion of either serrated cake or bread knife. And the most important style knife to have is the cook's knife, which come in any size between three inches all the way up to about three feet. Way too big. This is my dinosaur's carving knife. Two really important things, how to hold the knife and what to do with the other hands so we don't lop our fingers off. So remember, holding the knife, pinching both sides, wrapping around, and the other hand utilizes the claw. But let's talk about sharpening and honing. To have a sharp knife, we need two flat facets that meet at a point. Industry standard is between 15 and 20 degrees on each side. And how do we use this sucker? Get that 15 to 20 degree angle and that same arced swipe and back and forth. So let's check out our cutting station. And this is what it comprises of. So we have our cutting board mounted down. We have our damp towel, prep and scrap bowl, bench scraper, and now our cutting station's ready to go. Now there's three main styles of cutting. Number one, European style. Down and forward, going up and back. Down and forward, up and back. Number two, Asian style. So we're gonna go straight down and forward or straight down and back. And finally, chopping. Has to travel down, but just slightly forward or down and just slightly back. So in this section, I'm gonna show you a system that works on everything that exists in this universe that is edible. And that would be slice, stick, and cube. So we slice and turn it. Slice and turn. Slice and turn. And last one, slice and turn. Baby petite claw. And it's gonna go right on the top. Since we cut sideways, there's, we miss, we won't knock our hand off. Now we have a bunch of sticks held together by that root end. Let's let that root end hold them together. So we cut this way and we get perfect little cubes of onion. Now here is the money shot. Hey! You need to yell at your garlic. It's super important. It gives us that feeling of, ah, kitchen zen. Now I need my special tool, culinary x-ray goggles, so I can see where that core is in the center. I'm just gonna finish doing some slices here. And it's gonna work in that same system that we're used to. We're gonna take slices, make sticks, and then cubes. Now let's talk about some herbs. There's three main styles of chopping that we're going to learn about today. Going chop, 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 chop. Roll chop. Chop and roll at 180. And we're gonna continue down the carrot rolling and chopping. It's a fried chop. So we turned it on one axis. Let's turn it on a pitch. And now try to chop how to walk around the kitchen with the knife. It's kind of like little kids with scissors. We're gonna have the blade at our side, pointed down, and the blade back. If the knife does fall off the counter, jump out of the way, moving your feet out of the way, especially. 
The worst thing that's gonna happen is you might dent your floor or maybe ding the tip of your knife. But safety comes first. So now you're armed with all the skills you need to attack your next culinary adventure like the pros. Remember that repetition. Repetition. Repetition and practice makes it perfect. It takes only a little bit of time and patience to master the skills. So you can check us out at Kitchen on Fire or just look out for our next technique DVD. Because if these two clowns can cut, so can you. Cheers. Cheers.